Hey there, in this tutorial we'll be making a cutscene system. This will allow you to control the actor objects and make them perform some actions in order. So let's get to it. Here I've imported sprites for two actors. Both have two states, idle and walk. Now I'll go to objects and create an object called O Manager. I'll also create an object called O Actor Parent which will be the parent of the actors. So I'll create objects for the actors too. Now I'll add the sprites. Now I'll open the actor parent and in the parent menu add both of the actors as children. Now I'll add a create event here and add this. This is the movement speed of the actors and these variables store the current speed and direction of the actor. The variable move this will store how much it has moved which will be used for the cursing system. Now I'll open oh boy. Here I'll add a create event and add this. The function event inherited runs the event from the parent. So first the create event from the parent object will run here. Then these variables will store the sprites for the idle and walk states. Now I'll open oh girl, add a create event and add similar code here. Now I'll open the parent object and add a step event. Here I'll add this. These variables will show the horizontal and vertical speeds converted from the speed and direction variables using the lender functions. They'll be then added to the x and y of the instance. If the speed is not zero, it'll set the sprite to the walking sprite. Then it'll set the image x scale to the sign of the horizontal speed to make the actor face where it's moving. It might become zero if the actor has no horizontal speed, so in that case we'll set it to one. And if the speed is zero, the sprite will be set to the idle sprite. Now I'll open O Manager and add a create event. Here I'll add this. CTS pose will show the action number that the cutscene is on. So currently it's at minus one since the cutscene action started zero. CTS type stores the cutscene that is currently running. CTS enums is a 2D array that will be used to store the action info for each cutscene. This enum stores the cutscene types and our first cutscene is called test. This enum stores the actions that the actors can perform. In this tutorial we'll be only adding the move action. Now I'll create a script and call it add anim. This script will be used for adding actions to a cutscene one by one. The script will take four arguments. The first one is the cutscene where this action is to be added. The second one is the actor that should perform this action. The third is the action type. And the last one is an array with the data for the action. These arguments will be stored into these variables. This variable will get the number of actions there already are for the cutscene from the CTS anims array. At that position in the array, we'll add this array which holds the actor, the action type and the data array. So this way we are storing all the info required for an action into this 2D array. I'll add another script called cutscene start and inside it I'll add this. This script will start a cutscene that should be mentioned in the argument. The CTS type variable will be set to that cutscene and CTS pose will be set to zero so that the cutscene starts. Now I'll go back to our manager's create event and build the cutscene. Here we are adding actions to the test cutscene in order. The first action is the move action for our boy. The distance it should move is 64 and the direction is 0 so it'll move to the right. So like this you can store the data required for an action inside this array. Then the girl will move to the left. Then the boy will move diagonally at 45 degrees and then it'll move up. Then this will start the cutscene. Now we'll add the begin step event. This is where the cutscene will run. I've chosen begin step so that it runs before the step events of the actors. So I'll add this here. This code will only run if CTS pose is at or above zero, meaning that a cutscene is playing. This part will get the animation data from the 2D array using the current cutscene and the position. Then it will get the actor, action type and data array from the array into these variables. Now I'll run a switch statement to run different code based on the action type. So I'll add this. The switch statement will run for the type and this case will run when the action type is the move action. This will get the distance and direction from the data array. This will set the actor's speed to its move speed so that it starts moving. Then it'll set the direction. The actor's move dist variable will be increased by its speed so it'll store how much it has moved. Finally, if the actor's move dist reaches the distance that it was supposed to move, the action will end. So CTS pose will be increased by 1 to move on to the next action and the actor's speed and move dist will be reset. Now I'll add this after the switch statement. This will check whether CTS pose reached the maximum number of actions for that cutscene meaning that it's the end. If that is the case, then CTS pose and CTS type will be reset to minus one and the cutscene will stop playing. Now I'll open the room and place the actors and the manager here. And now I'll run the game. You can see that they move and the cutscene is working. Now to add a new action, you'll have to add it inside the scene and then create a switch case here to perform that action. 
I hope this tutorial helped you. If you want to learn more about Game Maker Studio 2, check out my new Udemy course here and make sure to subscribe to this channel for more free content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.